Good morning everyone, Gadget here again for another one of our Capture One in 5 Minutes video series episode thingies. I really gotta get better at, at saying what whatever that is. Okay, listen, let's talk about this. In this episode, I'm gonna teach you about the Dynamic Range tool. There's been some advancements here in Capture One version 20, so let's dive into it, demystify this, and hopefully get you guys confident in using this tool with your images. <laughs> have an image that you've taken and especially if it's a raw file from your camera well I, I would I would argue I would argue that it's especially if it's a raw file probably not a JPEG there's a lot of information here that you just don't see right off the bat that's been converted and embedded into that raw file you can use your high dynamic range tool in capture one to see that and it's especially when you look at the darker tones before I get ahead of myself, let's go. All right, let's look at this high dynamic range tool. So it's right here. We have the highlight, shadow, white, and black. The highlights slider will cover a wide range of the bright tones. The shadow slider will cover a wide range of the dark black tones. The white specifically will affect only the topmost bright ranges. And the black slider here will cover the black most range of your image that makes sense. So really white and black operate at the extremes of the tonal range and highlight and shadow affect a more broader range. So let's see what it looks like in effect. When I use this tool, generally it depends on the image. In an image like this where there's a lot of dark tones, a lot of dark tones you can see here, I will start with the black slider. More often than not, it's not as dark as this image here. Um, I might not shoot underexposed like I did here, and I'll start with the shadow slider, but again, for this one, I wanted to show you the black slider first. Moving a slider to the right will brighten an image. Moving the slider to the left will darken an image. So for this one, where we want to bring more detail, we're going to push this to the right, and you know, here, it's a safe spot, but I want to push it to 100 just to show you, and you get that, that weird HDR effect. I felt like this was a trend on the internet for a while. You don't want to be doing this right now, people. Please, if you're doing HDR, especially this kind of garish HDR to your images, please don't. Please stop. Uh, anyway, so here, this looks like a, a safe range. 40, again, most of our darkest tones have been brightened here. And you can see that reflected in the histogram as well. From here, I'll bring the shadows because more than just the topmost dark areas, I want to affect a little bit more of that range. I'll use a shadow slider to bring a little bit more brightness, especially from that background here. So this one, let's say 35 is a nice spot. So right away with the high dynamic range tool, if we compare this to the original image, look at that, right? Going from the original image to this. Now this may not be the best image to showcase this, but the white and highlight slider will be useful when you have a lot of bright areas. Maybe you're outdoors shooting a landscape, that sort of thing. It'll allow you to reclaim some of the details in the highlights, especially in clouds, for example. What I generally do is toggle the warning here, where it'll show me if there's any information being clipped either in the shadows with the blue, or if information is being clipped on the white. It'll show up as red, saying that, hey, this area here has no information. It won't have too much of an effect, but again, if I pull this to the left, it will darken some of the brighter tones here. It's harder to see in an image like this where there aren't that many bright tones, but again, you will use this in conjunction with each other depending on the image, depending on the look that you're going for to push and pull detail. So let's go ahead and reset the highlight and white because it's not really necessary for the image that we're working with right now. Now, if you watch my previous episode in this series about the levels tool and using the black and white points there, what's different with that versus this is that in levels, you're dictating the black and white point in an absolute way. Whereas the black and white slider here, you're expanding or contracting those dark tones or light tones on the histogram. So again, on the levels, you're dictating the two hard points in an absolute way. With this, it's more of that stretching or compressing of the histogram with respect to whites and blacks. And if you're a little intimidated by this and getting started, listen, don't worry, just hit the magic wand tool and what this will do, Capture One will look at your image and mathematically tell you where the best dynamic range adjustment can be made. So as you can see, this one didn't even touch the black, it went straight to the shadows. But what it did here, if you look over here, because we have our warnings on, our highlight warning, you see that red spot? That means that 
information is being lost there. So we can actually pull the slider to the left and what this will do is recover some of that detail. Moving the white and the highlight wasn't enough so we'll even pull in the shadows a bit. And this is a great example here because moving the black slider only affects the blackest blacks. Am I, am I allowed to say that? Uh, moving along. Um, so it's not impacting that highlight spot on her leg as you can see here. Again, this is another way of going about and affecting your dynamic range in your image. So that's the high dynamic range tool in Capture 120. I hope you're finding these tutorials useful. I'm gonna have one out every single month until we are done with all the tools in this application. You guys are confident in maneuvering around Capture One. And again, if you don't have Capture 120 and you're thinking about getting it, you can start your free trial. I have a link in my description. And by clicking the link, whether you decide to purchase or not, it does support me. So thank you very much if you do consider to do that. If if you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Gadgen, and I'll see you next time.